This is Lonnie Clark with my co-host, Louisa Hamachek, on The Last Nuke, a radio program dedicated to help us permanently close the Columbia Generating Station, or as we call it, CGS. CGS is the last commercial nuclear power plant in the Pacific Northwest at the Federal Hanford Nuclear Site on the Columbia River in Richland, Washington. It's on top of newly discovered large earthquake faults, which could cause severe damage, resulting in a meltdown with radioactive fallout dust blowing in the winds of the northwest. And the contaminated cooling waters could spill into the Columbia River, passing Portland on its way into the Pacific Ocean. Join us each week as we share information and actions we are taking to realize the immediate permanent shutdown of the CGS nuclear power plant to help safeguard our families, our friends, animals, and our environment. Thanks for joining us. Good evening. This is Lonnie Clark and Louisa Hamachek with The Last Nuke, and we want to thank you for joining us. Thank you, Louisa. I am grateful that you're here every week. I'm excited about this project we have. Yes, and this is our fourth show. It's kind of sad. I'm, on one hand, I would be fun to keep doing the radio show, but I was thinking it'd be really fun if we like actually accomplished the task and didn't have to come on air and get this done. Um, you and I were talking. We wanted to discover who owns the Columbia Generating Station, right? Well, there's two things. Who runs it? Who owns it? Who's in charge of it? Who has the power to shut it down? Right. And who's responsible for the accident and will pay for all of the uh, problems from the accident if it has a meltdown? So there's a few things. But who's in charge of CGS? Well, who's in charge is Energy Northwest. Those are the owners. And Energy Northwest was a a, uh, made-up company um, that took a nuke that was on the Hanford military well, site. Here, let nuclear... me let me go to their webpage and I will read to you what they say about themselves, who we are. How about that? It's what it says. Question. Okay, you ready? Yep. Energy Northwest is a joint action agency formed by the Washington State Legislature in 1957 representing the small convergence, the convergence of small and big public power. Our consortium of 27 public utility districts and municipalities across Washington takes advantage of economies of scale and shared services that help utilities run their operations more efficiently and at lower cost to the benefit of more than 1.5 million customers. Okay. It's it, our agency. Let's see what it says. It says our agency, listen to this statement. <laughs> Our agency further improves quality of life throughout the Northwest through the generation of clean, reliable electricity from nuclear, wind, hydro, and solar projects. I would call that a false statement unless they take out the word nuclear. The agency. Right, but we know if, that they run. Um, this is what it says the agency people. owns and operates four electricity generating facilities White Bluff Solar Station. Packwood Lake Hydroelectric Project, Nine Canyon Wind Project, and the Columbia Generating Station, a nuclear energy facility. And in my opinion, I've been out there to see a few things, and uh, the others were um, symbolic. We were public relations things to teach people about wind power and solar power and stuff, but they were not a serious um, project that Energy Northwest is really the ones that are running uh, the Columbia Generating yeah. Station. This is what it says. Oversight of Energy Northwest operations is provided by an 11-member executive board and a board of directors comprising one representative from each member utility. Wait a minute. 11-member... Executive board. They have an executive board, and then they okay. have a board of directors. So it's, and a BC that comprises a representative from each of those 28, 27 public utilities and municipalities. Right. Well, the, the board of directors comprises 27 utility companies, yes. 
Okay, so... Um, so let's go back so to that. Let's imagine we are in one of these public utilities like eWeb or Lane Electric in Eugene. Uh, Lane Electric, are both of them, I think, are members of Energy Northwest. When Yet we're in Oregon. So most of them, you said, were uh, of these members of Energy Northwest were in Washington State, but a few were out of it, and two of them happened to be in our town where our little radio station is. Where? Isn't that true? Um, eWeb and, and um, Lane Electric co No, our electric... No, they... Actually, this is the weird part about this, is when you look at it, we are not listed on that board of directors. We don't have... We're not one of the 27 utilities. We're considered one of the... Uh, there's a statement that says... It also provides operations and maintenance services for generating facilities owned by other utilities and develops new power facilities. So we're one of those other utilities that's not on there. This is where it gets complicated because we also have the Bonneville Power Station. Who buys it? So they're the maintenance services for Bonneville Power. But we don't really have, we, we like we're not part of Washington, so we're not part of their 27 board of members. They just force their electricity on us. We have to take their electricity. They legislated that we have to take it. And, and that is Congress. We could get Congress to, to change that. I mean, this goes up at a deep level, but in order to actually change that, you have to get this 27 board member from Washington to say, oh, yeah, we're going to let Lane County stop doing it. This is why people stopped drumming this drum. But last night, this so, is, Louisa, I know we're talking about who owns all of this stuff is a way to go around them. I am going to be interviewing Nancy Newell. You know Nancy. She knows a lot who? about the Columbia Generating Station. She's been an anti- oh, Nancy, yeah. Yes. Gave me you know what she book. said, really? For, she's, I was telling her that we want to do this renewed effort to get in touch with these people and that, and I was asking her what, who she knows. She's like, this is what I do know. They're in violation of the law because the mandate that is mandated by the state of Washington says, if you can't show a profit after, you know, so many years, then you're, it, you can't stay open. Right. That's, and, she's the one who gave me the book of, of the uh, economist. That you had a paper he had written, a synopsis of it, that said it was a not a going concern it's not a good business it's shut down too much what was the book make- i did have i did have a synopsis so i got i got like a scientific paper you know like for a journal a journal report that i got when i was doing a research paper yeah. so what and, was the um, book do you remember the name of the book it's something very straightforward like economic analysis of the columbia generating station i'm gonna look um, that up and nancy gave it to me and she said if i'm going to be in this work i need to have know that this worked and it was um an economic analysis i believe it was commissioned by physicians for social responsibility and they paid for Mm -hmm. um um, his name is like mcmurthy or something like that um who wrote this the economist he was uh not like an environmentalist he was he is a noted economist and he analyzed it and it's not a good business concern it's being supported by the government to keep going for some reason. Like um, in most business practices, it wouldn't still be going. And as Greg DeBruyler said from um, the Columbia River Keepers from about 10 years ago, um, he'd worked in this work for 18 years to get the nuclear waste cleaned up at Hanford. And he was sick of the Department of Energy uh, being in the steering uh, control room of the entire Hanford project, because he says they operate it just to create jobs. And it's a job creation thing. It's a, um, and that it should go to uh, the EPA should run Hanford and this, um, and the EPA should be, in my opinion, uh, aware of and respond to uh, this new information about the high potential of that nuke having a meltdown, the Columbia generating station from the, earthquake that has been discovered and that it should be shut down because we know like Chernobyl and Fukushima it can break and it can have an explosion and then that fallout will go in the air of the entire northwest and all the businesses of the 
Columbia Plateau are in danger and all that stuff. But so who's in charge? The Department of Commerce, the Department of State, the military? I mean, like, why is the Department of Energy called that? Why aren't they the Department of Defense? And why isn't it the Department of Defense running the bomb parts and the EPA cleaning up the um, pollution at Hanford? Because Department of Energy has failed in their mission of every single deadline that they're supposed to be cleaning it up. They just extend the projects and give more people jobs. And you can drive all around Richland and see all the big McMansions. And they're all on the hills all around there. People who have big fat jobs, I can tell. At Hanford. Anyways. Um, it is how they get people into silent complicity, though, is to give them good jobs. That's the sad yeah. part about it job security too and they'll just say all the things they want them to say but um so um who designates who's in charge of hanford greg de Bruyler thought that the congress should take the reins away from the department of energy and be done with all their little you know deals with their friends little friendship deals with companies to get contracts to do research to do this and that to extend how long it takes to figure out the glass vitrification plant by so long that they go on and on and they need more experts to come in who are their friends from college or something. And um, I don't know what it is, but um, I think it would be a fresh thing to say that um, somebody else runs Hanford than the Department of Energy because they're keeping, for some reason, this, this bad business idea of this nuclear power plant running. And I think, and you think, Lonnie, that it has something to do with the military and the use of that nuclear energy reactors, power plants, material turns into nuclear bombs. Well, I also, I was thinking about that. We talked about that yesterday or the other day when we were talking. Yeah. And, you know, that might be a good, a, a portion of it. But, you know, another thing that I think that they're, why they're doing it, because if they stop doing it, then they have to accept responsibility for the byproduct, what they call waste. And that's no. the big elephant in the room. If they keep generating electricity and, and forcing it on people, they can use it as propaganda as like, well, we're only having to make this waste because you want to use your electricity. <laughs> yeah, and why do they lock down uh, one in every seven of those windmills, those beautiful, big, tall, beautiful windmills that are along the Columbia Gorge and Goldendale and all around there, hundreds of them. And if you look at them, there'll be six or seven of them working and then one of them isn't turning and then six or seven more and one of them isn't turning. And so it's like they're not even using some of them. And the guy at the, um, the gas station attendant in the, in bigs at the intersection of 97 and highway 84 or something um, along the Columbia I said, why aren't those windmills turning, some of them? And he said, they don't want to um, make too much electricity because they're still running the nuclear power plant. And um, then it would be useless. So, Louisa, um, you, know what I, the- you know what I found? Yeah. I found a map written by geologist Terry Nolan. Oh, yeah. That's, and that's it the, said, one- the title is called Quake Risk Look More Severe on Hanford Site. And so for those people that are going to listen to our podcast on Spreaker, I'm going to use this as one of maybe one of the logos or something like that, because I had posted Louise's map on our first three uh, podcasts because she did such a fabulous job. But I think this is really wait till you take a look at this. You guys, you would be shocked. Literally, well, it's riddle. Terry Nolan is the geologist. And the one who was quoted and um, heralded with the um, article in the um, Earth Island Journal that so turned my mind and said, oh, my God, that explained the um, the nuclear faults that are within miles of Hanford now you, that we didn't know about before. Yeah, you know, you talked about how they were kind of in between. And it is true. Hanford is right in between. That waste like tank, the the, the, not only Dakota. Hanford, at the Hanford Nuclear Reservation, on this map, number one says waste treatment plant, and number two is the Columbia Generating Station. And on either side of them, there was one previously known fault uh, that 
goes way long, way far over to the Yakima Ridge. And then, but to the south side of them, there are what's new fault extensions documented by U.S. Geological Survey on the, on the south, south side of each one of those plants and on the uh, north side of the Columbia Generating Station that link into these previously known faults. So that's one, and then above that was the same story, a previously known fault, and then below the previously known fault plus the new fault area that where they extended it, because what they did was they showed a short previously known fault, but then they discovered it's going way longer. So they ex- they extended it the spaghetti. Longer, 10 miles yeah, they extended the it like a big spaghetti street. string. Instead of just a little short space on the map, it's like right. now a big long spaghetti your- string. Yeah, now, the there's an, there's two more beneath that. that, but then this is the shocking information. When I count the recently discovered suspected faults, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten areas of newly recently discovered suspected fault lines. Yeah, and besides the actual graph, it's so deep that it's like plate tectonics, and it goes from... The Wallawa Mountains of Oregon. Well, isn't all Seattle. up there, like in the mountains, isn't that all like um, volcanic, ancient volcanic sites where there's like these, these molten, you these, know. Those, were, those are squirts that went up, but underneath it are the cracks of the plate tectonics, and the cracks go underneath the, um, the article has said that, and in the Seattle Times they refer to it um, also, um, but the cracks. Um, the fault goes underneath the Cascade Ridge. Wow. It's deeper. It's 10 miles deep, and the Cascades is like um, 14,000 feet above sea level is the tallest one, um, like uh, Mount Rainier. And the other thing about that, too, is um, volcanoes are sometimes cr- created by earthquakes, and other times yeah. earthquakes are created by volcanoes Mm -hmm. and we have Mount Rainier has the potential of doing its thing. And we have Mount St. Helens is still gurgling out stuff. And Mount Hood. Like all three of them. In fact, a couple weeks ago when those earthquakes in California happened, this was the freakiest thing to, I, this is the weird thing all up and down the West coast. It almost just exactly the same time within an hour of each other. All these volcanic and old ancient sites gurgled up and rattled, and they had small earthquakes all along the West Coast. So this is why the Columbia Generating Station needs to be closed down immediately. So, Louisa, we have about nine minutes. I know you want to talk to people about what they, you know... We do air this show on KEPW 97.3, and you're listening to The Last Nuke with Louisa Hamachek and myself, Lonnie Clark. And our goal of this show is to shut down the Columbia Generating Station before we have this gigantic earthquake, and then we will be in a world of hurt. So we on the KEPW, we're not allowed to do calls for action, but we're not going to be on KEPW everywhere. So we're going to do calls for action. <laughs> so, <laughs> Lou, what do you want to tell people this week? Like, what? Can, how can we begin to get this thing burbling up so we can get the movement to close Columbia Generating Station? Hmm. Um, I keep returning to Congress, um, and I believe in our American system, and I think we need to use it or lose it, and we should make it work. We should make this be an obvious call for health and safety. This is um, for the health and safety of me and my kids, my grandchildren, my family. I am saying I've noticed that this is a very big danger, and I don't feel safe. And I need my congressman to assure me that this will be shut down. But not just so, safe, it's economics, because this is a thing. While it's kind of like how Trump is closing down all these regulations, over 270 regulations, right, that he's shut down. This is the fact. It's going to cost so much more to fix when you don't take care of something. It's like if you have an oil, a car, a brand new car, and you never go to get the oil changed, it costs you a lot more money to keep that car if you want to keep it. Well, car. who's going to pay for this, by the way? Who's in charge of the responsibility right. for that accident? The, all those all those wine uh, vineyards that are going to be covered in this radioactive fallout of Pendleton. The United States of, government. 
uh, Donald Washington Trump State signed an executive election. order. The United States government, and this is the thing, you know, it's kind of like, oh, this is why we need, you, we need, we do need to lean on government? Congress to rewrite these regulations. This is outrageous. The way that they have just scuttled their responsibility oh, and funny, in rewriting. You just said the United States government, as if it's some other government, but that's my government. And if I paid any taxes, then my taxes are need to be spent better than paying for cleaning up crap or buying out wineries that are totally unusable anymore and all of the Pendleton woolens that would be sheep out there in the in the grazing they can't be used then all the um oh the hood river um nobody had better go back in the hood river so no more salmon out of the hood river sturgeon no more sport fishing no more any of that in the hood river and the windsurfers that would be finished no more of that um, and who else would, who would want to come to the Columbia Gorge as a tourist anymore? It has been a national park, but it wouldn't be after that. That would be the end of that. So there's all these businesses, but that would be stupid to say that our government's going to pay for it because that's our taxes. And if 50% already goes to a waste of war, and this was from the mess of the atom bomb being made, and so it was created for war. I've had enough of it. It's a waste. We need to um, deal with the climate change that, and other things rather than mistakes of nuclear power plants that we knew shouldn't have been running. And we have to make another Chernobyl movie about CGS because everybody knew it was stupid. And we don't want to have that be the story. We want to be smart Americans and proceed into a good new age where we're running it like a good tight ship here. We can't have bullshit with... Um, um, favoritism of companies getting away with stuff so that a few generations profit and have a big swimming pool and a Porsche when they go to U of O. Um, and so anyways, um, yeah, too much greed. We don't need to have big profits made and we need to have um, our Congress. Anyways, I've talked on too long. That's all right. <laughs> and you also swore that I'm going to have to edit out that S word. You can't say that. The S word is what? an ixnay on the FCC. There's a certain like five ixnay. or six words. Yeah, you cannot s- you cannot say to... the S word on on anything. That's like one of those. Uh, that's why they bleep out the president's comments when they go bleep whole com- com- countries. You know that was like shocking for the president to say that because that's like an FCC right. swear word. Oh, that S word. Okay. Yes, that you said that. So, anyways, I'm looking at. A well, this story. is what I would say. I, you know, I listened to I, Dave. I'd like to, I, something. Excuse I'd me? like to say something that maybe you could just cut out everything else that I said. But I'm looking at a little squirrel that came to visit right near me, and there was a deer that was here this morning eating some of the plums. And I want us all to get out of our offices and to remember nature, and that we're the responsible uh, humans. And they're counting on us, our little friends, the furry creatures and, and the fish in the, in the rivers. Um, those of us that love nature and feel connected to it, it's up to us to continue. I think it. everybody loves it. nature. That's kind of, I mean, no offense, but that's kind of a, I mean, people love nature. I don't think not everybody doesn't love nature. People love nature. That's the issue. That's and right. you, you go outside and go for a walk, even if you're walking in the city and you're just feeling the air, you feel a million times better than being stuck in your house. Yeah. I mean, nature makes us feel good, and we we can make nature be protected um, from having radiation on it. Well, it hasn't. You know, this is the issue. Oh, Why do you think my radio show is called The Age of Fission? Because we are living in... It is non-negotiable. My goal is like... You know what I think, Louisa, for real? This is why I want to do this radio show. All the nuclear power facilities need to be shut down, period. We need to end nuclear weapons, and the nuclear industry needs to stop until they, A, then we need to send all the kids. We need three times, four times more scientists. We need to give children a free education. We need a bunch of kids looking at this nuclear the byproducts that, you know, because what happens is you get the byproducts and then the byproducts create what they call daughters, which is like more radioactive stuff and often more harmful. So we got to figure out how to undo that knot. That's the issue. And we need a lot more scientists. And I really want a, a truth and reconciliation program. I, and I want our Congress to rewrite the laws and say, uh-uh, 
We're not going to lie to our constituents anymore. We're not going to give everybody a pass. We want you to tell the truth. It doesn't mean you're going to spend your life in jail because you created a situation you can't fix. We're sorry it's killing people. But the NRC on its website says the low th threshold, no to zero tolerance model accepts for every rem of radiation in the air. They accept 32,000 cancers a year, cancers and leukemias, and over 225,000 childbirth defects every year. And they consider that's considered normal for their kids. For yes, for their children, yes, quite. They don't mind. No, uh, my day job is working with disabled children. In that's school, right, and, and a lot of those children probably. Uh, Don Chapman and I were talking about that today. I think a lot of the children, frankly, have been the things that we autism is caused by exposure to ongoing low-level radioactive contamination. It Di might be, but we don't. Can't say things for sure like Yes, that. we can. John Goffman and Arthur Tamplin and Linus Pauling did definitive studies, 50s, 60s, and the early 70s when they finally got booted out because they could not come up with a different result. It proved that it, sh it does cause that. This is scientific studies that is irrefutable. So, yes, well, um, what they, happens with what we have now, here. you know what's happening is you're parroting the propaganda that we have been trained to think about since day one. Oh, well, we can't say it comes from them. You know how you could plant? This is their, honestly, I've given this well, a lot I, of thought. I can tell you one thing. I, I'm not going to say it all comes from them because I'm really, what I was saying is I'm more concerned about um, a whole um, handful of toxic chemicals that we've right. uh, been living with since we grew up. I was born in 55. And um, in the 60s, they really got going with a lot of pesticides and plastics and things that I was exposed to. So there's a number of things that kind of like that argument. Who's, whose poison is bigger? You know, D D Don Chapman and I were talking about that. We want all of these. There's a lot of groups around the country that are working to stop the pollutants in their environment. It would be awesome if we could build a yeah. consortium of people because it's not mine is worse than yours. It's all horrible and it's all sort of overlapping, but we right? To work on the but projects that we're doing. Last week I spent um, probably two hours dealing with Lane uh, Regional Air Pollution Authority about um, in my block is a company that is uh, making kitchen cabinets and they spray them with lacquer thinner type of, um, you know, it has that smell of spray paint. And um, so I've reported them, and I have to spend time. I report it every time I smell it, and I tell them which direction I can tell the wind is coming from. And they note it down in their computer, and they take note of it. And it goes through this the whole legal thing, and it's the community right to know about what are your neighborhood um, chemical pollutant companies. Yeah, yeah. And we have a right to know that, but we have to use that, the, chem the people's right to know um, what polluting and then after we know it what do we do about it but um you have to ask for it and there's a procedure to ask for it for that information if you don't you don't get to be told that we need to use it more because back in chicago a long time ago we were doing that and i was told back then if we don't use it we're going to lose it and we've had a number of bad presidents in between that didn't give a darn about it hey um, Lou, we uh, need to end very 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 shortly yeah Thank you, Louisa, for joining me. You're like a great co-host. I really appreciate you sharing this time with us every week. You guys have been listening to The Last Nuke with Louisa Hamachek and Lonnie Clark. Join us each week as we share information and actions we are taking to realize the immediate permanent shutdown of the CGS nuclear power plant to help safeguard our families, our friends, animals, and our environment. Thanks for joining us.